I'll be, I'll be doing the fire and ruby thing today uh, because uh, we didn't get anyone to do it. <laughs> so I actually did it a few hours ago before I came here. Yeah, uh, the first one is actually pretty simple. It's an object send. Basically, if you have a string or a symbol and you want to call a method, you can just uh, call dot send on an object and you can call that method. Uh, so, uh, but send calls private method as well. So I, I do use send sometimes in my test. Uh, even though you are technically not supposed, I mean, some people say you are not supposed to test private methods, but in some cases I do, so I use send. But if, let's say in your code you want to, uh, you, you want to make sure that send doesn't call any private method, you should use public send. So public send only ensures that you call uh, public methods. Uh, this is tip number two. Oh, goodness. Okay, uh, it's, okay it's sort of random. <laughs> you can see. Ah, uh, yeah, basically it's, uh, in Ruby 2.3 they added a uh, hash to prop. So you can do something like, uh, have, let's say you have a pricing hash, so like pencils, books, and pens with their, let's say, price. Uh, you can actually, from an array, you can, uh, like, let's say you have an array of the keys, you can call like dot .mat, and then you put a, what's that, curly sim, whatever symbol. M percent. Uh, M percent, yes. M percent and pricing. So what it does actually, it calls um, to prop uh, on the hash, and then it, the, oh, next slide to explain it. Yeah, so basically it, call, uh, it calls to prop on pricing and then uh, you'll call like and then you'll prop dot call the key of the hash so you can do something like that. I okay, hope it's big enough. Uh, yeah, so tip number three is actually something uh, related to some uh, related to some stuff that I did recently. So basically my, my task was to create a, like a fallback adapter for Postgres. So we run like a master server and then a replica server. So let's say if the master server is down, we want to fall back gracefully to the replica server. I know you can do it at the yeah, at load balancer between two Postgres or something like that, but we didn't want it at that level. We wanted it in the app level so that we reduce like uh, the uh, complexity of handling it at the system level. Uh, so basically, uh, this is not documented, but uh, this is like something I discovered. It's supposed to be public API, so I have no idea why it's not documented. So let's say if you declare like in your database or YAML your adapter, you call it, you can call it anything. Like for in my case, uh, Postgres fallback. Uh, so what will happen is that every connection you actually call, uh, let's say if you define a method in active record, uh, active record connection handling, and you define like Postgres, under, uh, your adapter name underscore con connection, uh, and then it receives a config, you can do a bunch of stuff with it. So in this case, I'm calling like, uh, you can actually call the Postgres SQL connection, they are all declared in, in the module itself, so I can get a connection. So. Uh, Okay, this this block is wrong. It's supposed the connection is supposed to be inside the <laughs> VM block. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, then you can rescue. Let's say if your master server is down for some reason, you can rescue from it. And then from you can like do funny things like uh, com I can pass it a different config, and then I'll connect to my replica server. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it. In our case, basically what we did was we rescue from it. We set our so we discourse runs forum. So we have a read only mode. We set our discourse forum to read only mode, and then we start a long running thread that keeps paying the master server every five seconds. Are you up? Are you up? Uh, so it's actually pretty interesting. Like we get to do, uh, we get to upgrade the database very often nowadays. We just kill the master server, boot up a, a new container for it, and then the site's only down for like five seconds or so. Uh, it's not down. It's in read only mode for five seconds. Or so so it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, tip number four is like uh, in Ruby 2.3.0, like you get positive and negative. So I, initially I was like, why do you, why in the world do you need this method? It's like, it's like uh, number of characters versus greater than zero, less than zero. Uh, so that was my thought initially, like why in the world do you need this? Like it, How does it work on zero? Uh, it's false all the time. Okay. Well, it's, it's false. And so initially I was like, why in the world do you need? Uh, so Rails added it first and then they, they, uh, they proposed it to Ruby. And we merged it in, uh, but I guess something interesting that you can do things like M percent, then pass in the symbol positive. Uh, this I don't know. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of it. I rather just do like something like that. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's less characters to type. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, this is kind of. I have no idea why we need this kind of uh, methods. Yeah. Uh, this one is controversial. I I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so it's actually in Rails, Rails 5 is coming, <laughs> this is in Rails 5, so uh, yeah, this slide, uh, yeah, so you have second to last, we, we pass you the, uh, which gives you the item from second, from, yeah, second from the last, as compared you can just do negative two index, 
So then they are third to last. I don't know, maybe you can add fourth to last, fifth to last. Uh, so I think you can do it. Yeah, so I don't really agree with the array part, but I guess it could be useful in terms of uh, active record uh, uh, in, what's the thing that? Uh, <laughs> Basically, you can query, uh, like, let's say you can do user.second to last, it will actually do the offset and limits for you. So, I guess that could be useful, but then Rails has a method user.42, it's a real method, it will return you the 42, <laughs> the 42nd 40 record in, in your data, uh, for your, uh, let's say, user in this case. Uh, so, we have one, in, in Rails, it's, uh, if you look under uh, one, one of the files, we have one, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, then it's 40 sec, uh, 42. So perhaps you'll get second to last, third to last, and forty second to last. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just for fun. Uh, yeah. So that's all for my five random Ruby tips. Hey, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, the uh, Postgres is a uh, big graph fallback adapter that you were talking about. Uh, it's, it's only on boot up of the app or at any point of the app that it detects a bad connection. Uh, it's actually at any time. So any let's time. yeah, correct. Cool. So every time. Uh, so what happens is, so if my understanding is correct, so it's, I'm still a bit new to what ha happens underneath. So let's say if you queue your master server, uh, the master server. So your connection, your current connection in the connection pool will be lost. So when that happens, uh, Rails internally will try to connect again to to the server itself. So that's where this part comes in. So you definitely get an exception. Uh, a few users will get an exception that they'll okay, get. Uh, the connection to the server is lost, something like that, <coughs> and then you fall back. Mm -hmm. So in, in this con uh, in this rescue part, you can actually do a bunch of stuff that you want. Yeah. So so you still maintain one master Postgres. Correct. One master at one record. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, records a bit of a dive. If you want to go into it? It's modules upon modules upon modules. Uh, any more questions? You, you seems to put your host and the prop in the uh, actual adapter code. Is that is that the real? I mean, as in like, do you put actual code there as in the config, or do you grab it from the YAML? Or? Oh, uh, okay. So we actually we actually put it in the YAML actually. So actually, this will be like config replica host, config replica um, uh, replica pod. So we we'll be added in there ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so the connection should be inside the game block so they can rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> this code will never work. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Where do you put this file? Oh, uh, you, uh, for us, we put it in an initializer. So if you require this file before you put up your real set, so you can put it like in the initializer, then you can find it. Did you, did you say that when it falls back, it's read only? Yeah, uh, so, so it's internally we have some code that enables us to set our site to read only mode so that you can't do any update or any update queries to the database. Because it's reading from the slave, right? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. yeah, but actually when you read from the slave, it's the automatic, you can't do update uh, mm -hmm. because it's recovering, so you can't do any update at all. Yeah, yeah I guess that's all. Yeah, can have a PR for for the second to last second. <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, and okay. Can I just use my call? Okay, I just use my. Yep. Uh, so we've come to the end of the talk. So does anyone want to hire? So it's like if you're hiring, get one, say, few stuff. Oh, wait, no, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs>